conditions and how the price would be affected. Yeah. Okay. Second question, uh, Minister, was about our our energy buys from Russia. Did they figure in your conversations? Look, I I want to tell you that um, you. there has been a fair amount of misconception on energy buys from Russia. I have said quite frequently, and I said that to my colleague, uh, the External Affairs Minister, that, you know, typically uh, Europe buys in one afternoon what we were buying in a quarter. We ended the financial year uh, 31st March 2002 with a total amount of imports of Russian oil at 0.2%. 0.2%. Yes, when uh, 24th February took place and uh, in the months, if I remember correctly, April, May, June in that quarter, you know, the first quarter of the next year, uh, imports from Russia uh, were significantly arose uh, as a result of the, uh, you know, dislocation in the market. But subsequently, uh, uh, other suppliers stepped in. And I think uh, in the following months, I think another Middle Eastern supplier was, uh, was at number two situation. I think the Saudis were number one suppliers always, and for a one quarter, I think the Russians moved up. Then the other Middle East suppliers come. Look, let me make it very clear. India will buy oil from wherever it has to for the simple reason that this kind of a discussion cannot be taken to the consuming population of India, I mean, just imagine what has happened, the kind of dislocation and chaos you have in some countries, I don't want to list any, but let's say in India's vicinity, where for the love of money, uh, there is no energy. And we have ourselves in one particular case extended um, assistance up to $4 billion and a lot of that is in energy. So we have a moral duty to supply to our listing. Now, in very often people don't understand how the oil trade takes place. Now, if I have to buy, let's say, crude from a very far distant place where the cost of the icebreaker has to go in, the discount doesn't work out too very much. It, for us, it's much easier to buy from a proximate point, let's say, uh, in the Gulf. Now, the oil markets will play. We have a large market, and if we have to play the market card, to choose. Make no mistake on this. I think everybody has to realize the producer has the sovereign right to decide how much quantity they want to release. They say that doesn't affect the price. I, it's their judgment. I would respectfully submit that I have a different view. If you release quantities which are much shorter, it will result in uh, you know, driving up prices, which in turn exacerbates the inflationary situation and which will in turn result in uh, deepening the recessionary condition. And make no mistake, large parts of Europe today, I don't want to name countries, I mean, I'm on record, uh, are undergoing that, that difficulty. Have I been told by anyone to stop buying Russian oil? The answer is a categorical no. I mean, tomorrow, let's say there is a shortage. I mean, my friend represents a paper in the south of India here. He knows what is happening uh, in countries uh, in close proximity. Is that an argument you will go and uh, tell there to me, I can't supply you energy because, and look, I'm dependent 85% uh, of for my imports of crude oil on imports. The other thing, Yashwan, please remember, India consumes 5 million barrels a day, and that consumption is going up. You know, our civil aviation is packed, our cars, uh, roads are full. Uh, economic activity is booming. So no, we are not told by anyone to, that don't buy this, don't buy this. understanding. I mean, if there is an issue of how you want to deal with a ge evolving geopolitical situation, mature governments can have discussions and those discussions will take place. But I think the developments yesterday put an entirely different dimension on the kind of, uh, you know, uh, I'm not saying the context has changed. But it's a, certainly a new dimension uh, to that context.